Deep within the caves of northern Spain, handprints and wild animals dance on stone. Until now, the mystery of who created this art remained tangled in shadows. New DNA traces, found on ancient paint and tools, shine a fresh light on these artists. Some sites, like El Castillo, hold pigment from as early as 40,000 years ago. What species and stories echoed in those chambers? As old ideas fade, a new puzzle comes to life, one that promises to redraw the story of human expression. Deep within El Castillo, a cave on Monte Castillo in Cantabria, red discs, ladders, and pale hand stencils emerge by torchlight. Uranium thorium measurements on thin calcite skins place some motifs at around 40,800 years ago, among the earliest securely dated images in Europe. The Hook's mystery frames every panel here. Whose breath outlined those hands? Whose eyes read the stone? In these chambers, the question of authorship collides with the first durable language of pigment and rock. The evidence is spare but precise. Hematite and other iron-rich ochres supply the reds. Soot on ceilings hints at resinous torches. Flowstone has built a clock over paint, allowing dates without destroying pigment. Hand stencils appear to have been made by blowing pigment against fingers pressed to the wall, a method that could have used saliva as a simple binder. That detail matters, because if saliva rode the spray, it may have left traces of ancient DNA, fragile, partial, but potentially identifiable to species such as Homo neanderthalensis or Homo sapiens. El Castillo spans generations of visits, from early Upper Paleolithic signs to later Magdalenian additions after 20,000 years ago. The motifs are not a single event, but a layered conversation with the cave. To move from imagery to identity, researchers now turn to what clings invisibly to the paint and the tools that made it the minute residues that might still carry a human signature. Under a microscope, a flake of red from a Cantabrian panel is a landscape of crystals and voids. Within those voids, teams in Spain and France have begun sampling micrograms of calcite skins and pigment residues for environmental DNA and proteins. Early reports from metagenomic screens show microbial communities adapted to dark, humid caves and occasional fragments of animal DNA. Claims of human sequences are emerging but remain limited and carefully vetted because contamination is a constant threat. The logic is straightforward. If paint was sprayed by mouth, saliva could be a binder, and if binders existed, some molecules might still be there. The tools echo the walls. Ochre-stained grinding stones from upper Paleolithic layers in northern Iberia speak to pigment preparation. Hollow bird bones with red residues, interpreted as blowpipes in several Western European contexts, show how artists could aerosolize paint without touching the wall. Beyond Iberia, a breakthrough in 2023 recovered human DNA from a deer tooth pendant dating to around 20,000 years ago, demonstrating that skin contact DNA can persist on artifacts. Even a 5,700-year-old birch pitch chewing gum from Northern Europe preserved a complete human genome, a reminder that saliva-borne molecules can survive in the archaeological record under favorable conditions. Together, these strands do not yet name the painter at El Castillo, but they tighten the circle of possibility. As methods improve and sampling becomes more precise, the residues on Spanish walls are expected to yield clearer signals, an essential step before weighing a bolder claim that some older Iberian motifs might predate Homo sapiens. In 2018, uranium-thorium dating of calcite over red motifs at La Pasiega, Cantabria, Maltravieso, Extremadura, and Ardales, Malaga, returned ages around 64,000, 66,000 years ago. If those minimum ages hold, they push the paintings back beyond the arrival of Homo sapiens in Iberia and into the time of Homo neanderthalensis. A red scalariform sign at La Pasiega, a hand stencil at Maltravieso, and flowstone-marked pigment on Ardalis stalagmites would then represent Neanderthals choosing, mixing, and placing color in darkness. Not all accept this easily. Specialists debate the reliability of calcite dating in thin or complex crusts, noting possible detrital thorium contamination and microlayering that could skew ages younger or older. 
The claim remains under active review, with some researchers arguing for younger formation of the dated skins. Meanwhile, ancient DNA reinforces the context. Neanderthals are well attested in northern Spain, from genome-bearing bones at El Cidron dated to around 49,000 years ago to sedimentary DNA that has detected Neanderthal presence in European caves even where bones are absent. The genetic signal anchors Neanderthals in these landscapes during the window the dates propose. If some Spanish motifs do belong to Neanderthals, the story of art widens. But even if the dates compress toward 45,000, 40,000 years ago, a handoff looms. Homo sapiens entered Europe and Iberia in this interval, bringing new toolkits, networks, and symbolic habits. The next question is how their arrival reshaped the walls. As climates swung cool and unstable around 42,000, 38,000 years ago, Homo sapiens moved along river valleys and coasts into Iberia. The orientation, blade tools, bone points, personal ornaments, marks their presence. At El Castillo, a red disc dated to around 40,800 years ago sits within this early Upper Paleolithic horizon, while elsewhere in Europe, the lions and rhinos of Chauvet rise between 36,000 and 33,000 years ago. Later, Altamira's polychrome bison in Cantabria bloom between 20,000 and 14,000 years ago, evidence that image-making became a durable tradition spanning millennia. DNA helps tie people to these times. In Eastern Europe, human remains at Bacho Kiro in Bulgaria carry Homo sapiens genomes around 45,000 years ago, confirming the species' early spread across the continent. In northern Spain, the Magdalenian burial known as the Red Lady of El Miran dates to around 18,700 years ago. Her bones dusted with ochre, and her genome places her among Western European hunter-gatherers. These anchors frame the human populations who could have painted Cantabrian walls after 40,000 years ago. The convergence of radiometric dates, tool traditions, and ancient DNA does not put a brush in a specific hand, but it narrows authorship for many panels toward Homo sapiens. With the artist's species increasingly clear in younger phases, attention turns to the maker's identities within those groups, who taught, who mixed pigment, who stood close enough to leave a print. On the limestone at El Castillo and Maltravieso, hand stencils vary from broad-palmed adults to small, narrow hands. Analyses of finger-length ratios from Spanish and French caves, using the relationship of index and ring fingers, suggest that many stencils were made by women, though the method and its accuracy are debated. Some hands are small enough to belong to adolescents, hinting at learning, ritual, or playful participation around 25,000-20,000 years ago in later phases, even where a Maltravieso hand stencil may predate 60,000 years ago. The range of sizes across sites shows that hand marking persisted as a shared practice across generations. Children are not only inferred, they are tracked. In Rufignac Cave in the Dordogne, small footprints and finger flutings run across galleries from around 13,000 years ago, and at Peshmerl, adolescents left prints near the spotted horses painted around 25,000 years ago. In Cantabria, the preserved Magdalenian floors at Lagarma, a multi-level cave complex, reveal intimate activity areas from around 16,000 years ago with pigments and tools left in place, the archaeology of presence rather than absence. New biomolecules add a human timbre to these scenes. A deer tooth pendant dated to roughly 19,000, 25,000 years ago yielded the nuclear DNA of a woman, showing that skin contact crafts can carry a maker's genetic trace. At El Miran, the ochred bones of the woman buried around 18,700 years ago bind pigment to identity, underscoring that color had social weight. Together, the prints, the tools, and occasional genomes imply a chorus of makers, not a single voice. With that chorus in mind, the walls themselves become sources, the place where residues can still speak. In Spanish caves, such as Ardales and El Castillo, Researchers now sample the thinnest mineral skins with ultra-clean drills, pairing uranium-thorium dates with environmental DNA and proteomics. Portable XRF and Raman spectroscopy map hematite, manganese dioxide, 
and clay binders directly on the wall. Microstratigraphy charts painting episodes separated by thousands of years, such as layers that fall between 40,000 and 20,000 years ago. The aim is to read the panels as archives, time, material, and touch all layered into stone. The picture that emerges is careful and composite. Sedimentary DNA can confirm which humans were present in a cave at particular intervals. Isotopes and pigments reveal where materials were sourced. Crust dates bracket when images existed. Some Iberian motifs likely fall within the world of Homo sapiens after 40,000 years ago. A few older marks may point toward Neanderthals around 64,000 years ago, though the timing remains debated. Sex and age are glimpsed through hand sizes and the rare artifact genome. Roles are inferred from activity floors like those at Lagarma. No single method decides authorship, but together they close distance between maker and mark. The earliest art is not a lone invention, but a tradition renewed over at least 30,000 years. As new samples from calcite skins and pigments return from the lab, the caves of northern Spain continue to answer with quiet clarity and to pose better questions for the next layer of the story.